Welcome to Live Greater, a health and wellness podcast brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System. We put knowledge and care within reach so you have everything you need to live your life to the fullest. This episode is sponsored by the University of Maryland Rehabilitation Network. Offering a full range of physical rehabilitation services, the UM Rehab Network brings together a committed team of experts from across Maryland to help patients recover from illness or injury, such as stroke, joint replacement, or traumatic injury. The University of Maryland Rehabilitation Network, bringing world-class comprehensive rehabilitation services directly to your neighborhood. Today we're talking about what rehab can do for you in the midst of cancer treatments with Gregory Mesa, manager of the Department of Rehabilitation Services at the University of Maryland Medical Center. So Greg, what is the most important advice to give a cancer survivor? Well, that's a very great question. I actually am a cancer survivor. So I am speaking uh, to you with a, a unique perspective. And I think both from my personal experience and from my professional experience, I think the most important advice I could give cancer survivors, especially who are going through treatment, is to drink a lot of water and to move. You know, having these experiences creates just a, a whole bunch of different emotions and feelings. And many times cancer survivors can find it hard to have hope when they're facing these very difficult challenges. And I think instituting things in your day that you can control helps. So drinking a lot of water, moving, and of course, this would all be in consultation with your oncologist. But I I would just say the movement and drinking water is probably one of the best things that you can do. And so simple and easy to do too as well. Now, at what point in the care process does rehabilitation come in for a patient undergoing cancer treatment? So rehabilitation can come in at virtually any point in the cancer treatment. It really depends on what and how you're being treated for your cancer diagnosis. If, for example, you're getting radiation to your throat, then speech language pathology can help with swallowing difficulties and things like that, which typically develop from the treatment of those things with radiation. If you're a breast cancer patient, a lot of times if you've had any type of surgery or lymph node resection, you know, upper extremity issues can develop pretty quickly. So as soon as a patient starts to develop pain or any other type of loss of function issues that aren't related to their cancer, rehab is a good option for them. One thing we do know is, you know, as we stop moving, our bodies, and this is independent of cancer, our bodies will start to tighten up. So what we don't want as a rehab professional is I don't want somebody who's already dealing with a pretty significant issue to then have an additional issue to deal with. And so that's why I say I encourage movement and drinking water just to help us help the patients through this process. But if they're being limited by function, or pain that is not related to their cancer, those are things that can be addressed through rehab. Sure. So use it or lose it, right? (laughs) Pretty much. What area of the body typically needs the most physical rehabilitation, Greg? Well, I would say with cancer treatment, I mean, the whole body is going to need some type of rehab. And again, a lot of this can be done by patients at home just by moving. And that's why, again, I go back to the movement part, especially if you're undergoing chemotherapy. I mean, fatigue is a really, really significant issue, but you have to make yourself move some. You know, it's a balance. Even though your your body's going to say no, you still got to try to move some. You're not going to move as much as you did before you started treatment, but you still got to move because that's your body needs that movement to continue the healing process. Now, when you say move, are you talking about walking or moving your arms around, calisthenics? Give us some examples. I would say all of the, well, calisthenics might be a little aggressive. Pre-cancer treatment myself, I would have said yes to all of the above. Post-cancer treatment and having gone through that fatigue, Calisthenics would probably be a reach, but walking is definitely not. Moving your arms around. So if you've got something where you've had some type of intervention to your upper extremities, to your arms, as soon as your doctor says you can start moving it, you need to start moving it. So it really depends on the cancer that you're dealing with. But in general, walking is usually 
going to be one of your best bets. And what I recommend patients, and that I did myself, is just to really kind of come up with these very small goals. You know, and I'm going to walk to the mailbox and back at least once a day, or the end of the block and back. Whatever you can do to try to incorporate those on a daily basis is important. Very good. Now, does your team prepare differently for cancer rehab than for, say, something orthopedic? Not necessarily. They understand cancer rehab. They understand the fatigue, cancer-related fatigue that comes about. So they will absolutely adjust the treatments to meet the needs of the patients. But there isn't a special thing that they need to do because they're focused on what is the impairment that they can help with that they can help influence. And so that's going to be their focus. They understand cancer, but again, the treatment of it, it's going to be just what they would normally do, just maybe scaled back a little bit. Got it. Now, what can a patient expect when they begin their rehabilitation? Well, they can expect that they're going to have things to do. And I think, again, as a cancer survivor, that's always welcome to have something that you can do, that you can control, that you can make a difference with because sometimes you feel helpless. And that's, again, one of the benefits of rehab is really no matter where you start, whether it's with speech, occupational therapy, or physical therapy, you're going to have something that you need to do. And it's important that you do it. Again, you've got to get that control over what you can control. There's a lot you can't, but what you can, it's important to start taking control of it as early as you can. Give me some examples of some of the things you do with uh, cancer patients during rehab sessions. So one of the things, I had a cancer patient who had severe peripheral neuropathy. She couldn't feel her feet. She couldn't feel her legs. She came in pretty much in a wheelchair, but she could move and she could move her legs. She just couldn't feel it. So we worked a lot on first how to stand and she had to to do things a little differently than she did before. But, you know, we were able to kind of work her through being able to walk again and she had to pay special attention. She needed some special things to help her foot maintain the, the right alignment, but we could get her going through that process, which previously she didn't think she could. She kind of just assumed that if she can't feel her feet, then she can't walk. So things like that we would take, and it would vary depending on what the patient was being seen for. Sure. It must be very gratifying to be in your position as a survivor to help others live their best possible lives. So thank you so much, Gregory, for the great information and for all the good work you do. I know a little bit of what you're talking about because I am living and married to a cancer survivor with neuropathy. So we thank you so much for all you do. Oh, you're certainly welcome. Thank you. You can learn more about how the UM Rehabilitation Network can help you with cancer treatments at umms.org slash podcasts. Thanks for listening to Live Greater, a health and wellness podcast brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System. I'm Deborah Howell. We look forward to you joining us again next time.